the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Cardinals, your daily Arizona Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Fired up, rise up, Red Sea, Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're your host, Bo Brock, Alex Clancy. Follow along on Twitter, our Twitter account back up, fully operational after, uh, I guess, Alex, I don't know if you were sending some unsavory tweets, but at Locked On AZ Cards, and also you can follow us at B-O-B-R-A-C-K, Bob Brock in your search queue, or at Clancy's Corner. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching on YouTube, the YouTube channel taking off. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Check out some of our older videos. And if you're listening on podcast, we appreciate that as well. Subscribe. Leave us a review. Rate us. Despite what you think about the podcast, we just want to hear from you how we can get better, where we can uh, maybe just be old, grumpy old men and just uh, shake our fists at the clouds. Ravens fans are the worst. The Ravens, Ravens fans have jettisoned our rating because I say Lamar Jackson is not a good pass for the football yeah. and they're How delusional. So, um, yeah, that's why we're at a three, nine or whatever. We have scathing reviews about how, uh, I, you know, disrespected their quarterback. You did. You absolutely did. Uh, Alex said couple, uh, last season, he, he said that he thought that Kyler Murray was more elusive than Lamar Jackson. And Which also, that, of course, if you just watch them throw the football, that Kyler Murray is a more talented, you know, passer of the football. I don't think that that's a hot take. But the Ravens fans, they came out in droves and they uh they they just they took down our reviews on Apple Podcasts. So we'd appreciate if you could say something nice about us. This episode brought to you by Peacock and Williamson, NFL analyst Brian Peacock, former NFL scout Matt Williamson. They host Locked On's Peacock and Williamson's every Monday through Friday. They give you a national perspective around the NFL, insight on every game, team, move around the league. Get your picks, previews, and much more every weekday on Peacock and Williamson, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. So the Arizona Cardinals made a couple roster moves. Hard Knocks opened up last night. They fired it up. We got a glimpse for the third time in the Dallas Cowboys. But some takeaways. The team that the Arizona Cardinals plays not once, but twice. They open up their preseason just a couple days from now, Alex. So I thought there was some takeaways from last night's episode. And then what the hell are the Arizona Cardinals doing at tight end? We talked about it a little bit yesterday. The worst rated tight end room in the NFL, and it's not even close. They barely registered on Mike Clay's, you know, position ratings that he does each and every year. They got a point one. Their tight end room got a point one. And that is by far the lowest. We'll get into the conversation. What are the options? Are there some trades out there? Somebody uh, tweeted at me yesterday. It might have actually been in the YouTube comments about uh, Zach Hertz. And I think that ship has sailed. I think the Eagles have said, uh, and it's not a report any longer, that they want to keep Zach Hertz. So I don't think Zach Hertz is an option. But there are some other options out there, whether it's trade, whether it's free agent heap. We'll see. But uh, we got to figure out the tight end position on this episode. I mean, uh, smart to keep Zach Ertz. Very smart. I think you kind of have to throw away last year. The recipe for at least initial success for a young quarterback is a good defense, a good run game, and a receiver you can rely on. And Zach Ertz has been one of the most dependable receivers. You call him a receiver, whatever. Him and Dallas Goddard are a problem. You know, when they're both healthy and they're both on the field, it seems like they've used Zach Ertz between the 20s, and Dallas Goddard was uh, Carson Wentz's favorite red zone target, which uh, pissed off fantasy football fans, but that's kind of what the split was. We'll see how they uh, do things with Jalen Hurts. Yeah, I mean, Trey Burton is, is a name that's out there, and he's produced, and he's not Max Williams. Now, Bo, I brought this up, and I got in conversations with uh, 49ers fans about this. If they can somehow figure out how to use Max Williams like Kyle Juszczyk, and I know they play different positions, but the fact that Kyle Juszczyk is an integral part of that offense, mainly because you know they haven't had a quarterback that can throw the ball past the line of scrimmage, um, that's an, a wrinkle you could add into this offense with Cliff Kings, Kingsbury's brain that could work, right? And I know it's not a direct comparison, but... I think that you're sleeping on how athletic Kyle Juszczyk is. I, th Maybe. I think he's a little bit more athletic, a little bit more agile, a little quicker than Max Williams, who takes tiny steps. He just does, He's not an athletic guy. He's a great blocking tight end. And the Arizona Cardinals, as far as blocking tight ends, 
I think people are sleeping on that facet of the game. Like when you look at that room, they're very, they're very productive in opening up rush lanes that Max Williams, one of the best in the league. Let's not forget that. And I think that that's, you know, as far as how Cliff Kingsbury has been utilizing that position the last couple of seasons as head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, that's more important to him than having a playmaker. But there's, there's an absolute just uh, void as far as playmaking tight end. And they, they have to figure something out because I can't imagine that they can just move forward with, because right now it's Max Williams, it's Darrell Daniels, and that's it. You know, Ross Travis, the guy that used to play power forward for Penn State, he's been in the league since 2016. He's on the roster. I think he's third on the depth chart. What are the expectations? Is he going to be your guy when you want somebody in the middle of the field? Unless they're just going to be like, okay, it's going to be our receivers. We've invested in the receiver position, a lot of draft capital. There's three second-round picks that play the wide receiver position on our roster. There's A.J. Green and, of course, DeAndre Hopkins. Are they just like we just need a we just need our tight end to block? Yeah, but and I mean, listen, that's completely rational. I mean, if you want to protect Kyler Murray and you can, you know, run plays for Max Williams, where you know it happens all the time, where there's you know you come in in, in in jumbo and there's a tight end that's wide open for a touchdown. I mean, that's gonna be there. I mean, if you want to use AJ Green in the slot, he can kind of be like a tight end. If you want Larry Fitz, when Larry Fitzgerald comes back, or or if he does, you can use him in that tight end role where it's not going to be blocking first. You know, you just line them up inside and not necessarily on the line, but you line them up and, I mean, you could do it that way. So you're right. You can circumvent it. But at this point, Bo, like, why clip your wings? And maybe this is just because they're waiting to see if Larry's going to come back. But there are names. Even Delaney Walker, who's out 80% of the year, you could bring him in a year, two mil, and just at least he's produced from the position. Because now they have ze- they don't have... a. A, a tight end on the roster that you can trust for anything aside from blocking. It's it's basically it's the NFL version of running a four guard lineup. Yeah, I mean it is. I mean it's you're going to run out all those wide receivers and you're going to have one big guy that can maybe rebound a little bit and protect the rim, but you're not going to rely on him offensively. And when we talk about you know this as far as how it, it pertains to the the tight end position is you're just going to rely on him to block. You're not going to have him go out there and make big plays. If if I were to tell you, if I were to predict, and it, it comes to fruition, that that uh, Max Williams has 200 yards receiving and Darrell Daniels has 200 yards receiving, you can get 400 yards of receiving yards from your tight end position. Are you okay with that? If your wide receivers do what you think they can do. I mean, that's around what Dan Arnold had last year. I think he had upwards of 500 receiving yards and four touchdowns. I think I need to double check. but. No, <laughs> you know, I mean, you, we saw last year and, and listen again, there is no safety net on this offense. Like, so say Kyler doesn't get like Kyler's there 17 games. Okay. If Deandre got, Hopkins gets injured or if AJ green gets injured and misses some time, there is no safety net at all, or at least not a proven one. And you're not going to rely on Rondo Moore and Christian Kirk to have 20 targets within the two of them. If one of the big guys goes down. So you need as much help as you can get at this point. It's not a matter of, is it going to work? It's a matter of, they need more to make sure that if something goes wrong, that they can still run an offense that can facilitate some points. Uh, Dan Arnold had uh, just over 430 yards receiving yeah. four touchdowns. Right, and they so, were in bulk too. Like, I think he had two yeah. touchdowns. And one, like, it was, he was the wide receiver too, it seemed like, towards the tail end of last season. Yeah, that was with Christian Kirk disappearing. Yeah. Um, and that, that was, uh, yeah, there was, there wasn't anybody outside of DeAndre Hopkins that was making plays down the stretch for the Arizona Cardinals. It was, yeah, it did feel like Dan Arnold was the guy that was making plays opposite Nook. So I'll take, I'll take those numbers that I, that I was projecting for Darrell Daniels. Now, I still think that they should do their due diligence and scour the waiver wire and just see who's available and who becomes available between now and the start of the regular season. It will be tough to implement that person and expect that they're going to be able to, you know, make an impact early on. But it it just seems like I, I we've gone over this so many times before, and you can check just our entire podcast library where we've pointed out the futility of the tight end position historically in the Arizona Cardinals franchise. I mean, their goat tight end is Freddie Jones in the early two thousands, and he barely had over five hundred yards receiving. Like that's the goat status. At the tight end position. That's not good. The last peak we had 
was when Ricky Seals Jones came out the practice squad and had two touchdowns in three games. Like, yeah, oh, found Lane him. Gap. Antonio yeah. Gates found him. He's our guy forever. <laughs> you know, like that. And that happened. That's like it was Ricky Seals Jones fever here in Phoenix because yeah. there was actually some sort of production from that from that position. But RSJ, man, RSJ people. No, you know what? It, it was the, the fever was real because if you were in any, any fantasy league, the following season in the, the, every draft, Ricky Seals Jones was going way too early. And then he was yeah. a, he busted. He busted because he was. He was a practice squad guy. And he's actually done pretty well for him at himself. He's still in the league. The Arizona Cardinals did release one of the tight ends that they picked up earlier this offseason. We'll tell you who that is as they made a couple roster moves uh, yesterday. And then we'll continue to look forward. I'll give you some takeaways. I tuned in to Hard Knocks last night because, my God, who doesn't watch Hard Knocks when it's on TV? HBL, man, it's back. You hear the theme, you're, you're a loser. It's Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This episode, it's brought to you by betonline.ag, and I'm looking at a glorious full slate of betting odds. For the preseason week one, Washington football team, minus two against the Patriots, Steelers, and Eagles. It's a pick em. How about the Arizona Cardinals? One and a half point favorites against the Dallas Cowboys Friday night. Bet on lines, the fastest, easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season in full swing. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all your sporting needs, including Major League Baseball, NBA, NFL preseason, NHL, UFC, MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to the bet online on your laptop, your cell. Check out all the great sporting news. Sign up bonuses. Yeah, right now, if you head over on your cell or sign up on your computer, you can get a 50% welcome bonus by using the promo code Locked On. Yeah, 50%. So if you put in 100 bucks, you get $53 to build your stack for the regular season. And while you're at it, listen to Locked On Bets with Lee Sterling. He's hooking you up with locks. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. We're back here, Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Uh, we didn't go anywhere. If you're listening on your podcast, we went somewhere we had to pay the bills. We appreciate all our great sponsors out there. They make it so you don't have to pay for this podcast. A lot of yahoos out there think that you should have to pay for podcasts. We don't think so. And that's what our sponsors, they make it possible for us. We appreciate everything from you guys and our sponsors. Alex Clancy, Bo Brock, follow along on Twitter at Clancy's Corner at B-O-B-R-A-C-K. So Hard Knocks kicked off last night. It was great to hear Leif Schreiber, the incredible narration for my money. I mean, if it's not a British guy, it's either got to be Morgan Freeman or Lee Shriver. David Attenborough, man. Planet well, Earth. Watch, yeah. <laughs> well, why do you qualify it? Because, because he talks would, differently than we do, Bo? No, because, yeah, you would listen to a British guy 10 times over any American except for those two. Morgan Freeman, Lee Shriver. Yeah. I uh, mean, Ray just, Donovan, very good show also. Very, yeah. Very underrated actor. I think that uh, Lee Shriver's been in some some pretty underrated roles but his best for my taste is narration of hbo sports in hard knocks now last night I, I was i was going into this season very downtrodden very upset that they would pick the cowboys for a third time i've seen it like the highlight of one season was jerry jones sitting down and eating popcorn with peter king it's like come on like we know the cowboys we know the whole jerry jones shtick what what are you gonna force feed us this time but it was it was I, I became a Dak fan even more so last night. He's a very likable guy. But then the rest of the squad, like Jerry Jones, I got you'll notice this, Alex, when you do tune in because it's it's inevitable. You'll watch it. Yeah. Uh he's he's so he's getting really old. Like he's, he's not really old. Yeah. I mean, they show him up doing a press conference, he gets a little teary eyed. My wife's like, Oh, you know, like this sad old man, like crying. And I'm like, that's Jerry Jones. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, you stop. You do not no no empathy for a Jerry Jones. But there were some takeaways, you know. Uh when you look at Micah Parsons, and they did a like a little feature on, on Micah Parsons, who they they uh they selected. I think was Parsons was the second defensive player off the board in this year's draft behind uh JC Horn. Um I mean, he's going to be the main competition for Zane Van Collins for the rookie defensive rookie of the year. And I gotta admit, like there was a scene where Micah Parsons was getting burned by a fullback on a route. And it kind of made you like, okay, we we saw Zayvon Collins recently. We watched a video of DeAndre Hopkins with Zayvon Collins draped over him, and the coverage looked way better. I mean, 
this fullback, unnamed fullback, who I think is third on the depth chart, I checked this morning, made made uh, Micah Parsons look like he was standing still. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of Isaiah Simmons and Micah Parsons. Not exactly the same player, obviously, but Micah Parsons is an absolute mauler. Like, yeah. if there wasn't that stuff off the field that obviously you put credence in, and obviously, you know, it's a big deal, he could have yeah, gone. Accusations of, uh, accusations of bullying and yeah, sexual assault, kind of. Uh, it was it was a, a locker room thing. Um, yeah. He could have gone before J.C. Horn. Like, it, I think he dropped because of that, and dropping for him was where was it ten. When when where he went yeah. to eleven to the Cowboys, yeah. uh, the interesting part about the Cowboys. Whenever I think of the Cowboys now, we always talk about you know who could we compare the Arizona Cardinals to. Some people say Kansas City, which is a joke. I went to Cleveland because there are you know high expectations. There's some names, but the media, as you mentioned, was burned by the Cardinals in twenty fifth or in twenty sixteen. Cleveland burned the media in what in two years ago, and you look at Dallas. How many big names are on that roster and how much have they won? Yeah. You know, it he, just he shows it could be a cautionary player. tale. A 12? Yeah, he was there was the deal. They they flip flop within the division. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I, oh, I right. completely agree. And you're watching that and and they're highlighting the offense the entire episode. You're like, this this is a team that's still struggling. They're gonna yeah. struggle mightily defensively. They they are, they just didn't do enough. I mean, they they drafted a bunch of guys. Uh, but you can't expect them to make a a big, you know, impact year one. And I, and I'm actually more comfortable with Zayvon Collins than Micah Parsons at this point. Two guys who didn't really play last year because of the pandemic college football season. But as far as you know, I know I know uh, Zayvon Collins was going like a thousand miles per hour in Scottsdale driving down Chaparral. But if that's his biggest character flaw, having a lead foot, you know, uh, yeah, slow down, son. But at the same time, like. I, I like his his leadership qualities. I like his coverage ability, especially this day and age. And um, I, I just think that you know his main competition is going to be Micah Parsons because of just his raw skill set, Parsons. But I think Zayvon Collins, and, and you look at the two guys that have been paid recently, and Darius Leonard and and Fred Warner. I think that the Arizona Cardinals could be onto something if Zayvon Collins pops. Now I well, will say this. Yeah, go ahead. No, I mean it's just. We're not used to things working out with with draft yeah. picks. That's why yeah. this none of this none of this narrative has anything to do with Zayvon Collins the player, which sounds super weird and twisted. But it's like again, I go back. It's like the movie Rockstar. I mean, you go in, you draft somebody, and it doesn't work. That's what we've seen from the Arizona Cardinals and Steve Keim. You know, Kyler Murray. Obviously, we've seen flashes here and there. Buda Baker, obviously, but all in all, it's not great. And we saw with Isaiah Simmons last year not being on the field. So Zayvon Collins, the player, probably needs to be focused on a little bit more than Zayvon Collins being tied to Steve Keim and that being the story. You yeah, know what we, I mean? we definitely, yeah, we definitely haven't seen him make an impact outside of Kyler Murray. Like, no first-round picks not named Kyler Murray have made an impact early on. No, Early on, for sure. DJ Humphreys has come yeah. on as of late, which has been great. DJ Humphreys didn't even play a single snap his first season. He redshirted. Like, yeah. you, you never, it's almost unheard of from first round picks in the NFL. Hassan Reddick took until his fourth season to make any kind of impact. So, yeah, I mean, we're just not, as far as this team and following it, you, you don't have any expectations for first round picks. I did see this. There's, a, there's an article on the team website right now, azcardinals.com, about the, the budding friendship between this linebacker core, this duo of Isaiah Simmons and Zayvon Collins. And, and Isaiah Simmons had the same like feelings I had for Alex Clancy really before I got to know him. He said, quote, I thought he was going to be a weirdo. <laughs> and then he said, he, we turned out to be really good friends. We spent a lot of time together, dinner and stuff. And we've got a lot of camaraderie going on. That's from Isaiah Simmons. And that's exactly what you want to hear from these two guys. Yeah, and you got to think that Isaiah Simmons was looking at Zayvon Collins and J.J. Watt playing golf like, what's going on here? Yeah. I was here first, man. <laughs> yeah. You know? I was here first, yeah. and Bo, I thought, and I still think that you're just a haircut, and it's fantastic because <laughs> one of us has to be. One of us right. has to be, as I turn into a Guess Who character slowly but surely. Um, <laughs> the storyline is set up for incredible future storylines. If yeah. these two work, Steve Kime will look like the best GM to ever garner a suit and stand on the sidelines on game day. Because this, from inside linebackers, has never 
worked ever. The height, the attributes, everything. It hasn't worked ever in the history of the NFL. So if he can somehow figure out a way to get these two guys together, get their strengths together, allow them to, you know, cover up for each other's weaknesses, this defense could be a top five defense in the NFL for the next, you know, five or seven years. Linebackers yeah, I mean, are so important. And the Cardinals haven't had, they've had to rely on safeties. You know, you had your time, obviously, in 20, in the BA area, in BA era, era. the linebackers were good. But, I mean, it's been, it's been tough. I think the last, you know, Jordan Hicks' first year signing with the team, fantastic. Right? Monster, was awesome. yeah. Everything you wanted. He even had three picks that season. Uh, but he, he showed a significant uh, slower step last year. Significantly slower step. But, um, you know, you think about Carlos Dansby, as far as linebackers who've been good for the Arizona Cardinals in recent history, but these guys, they can just completely transcend all of that. And you can think, I don't want to set the expectations too high, but you have seen it to where they've led defenses, really good defenses before, and Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright up there in Seattle for a couple of years. And then, of course, you had uh, you had Thomas Davis and Luke Keekley. I mean, that's the that's the dream right there. That's what you want. And then everybody else kind of you get that just is the anchor of your front seven. So, I mean, well, there, you're going to take your lumps. It's just like with you know starting Kyler Murray out game one. You're going to have your your ups and your downs. But at the end of the day, if, if you can if you tapped into somebody that can be if one of them can be Fred Warner. You'll take it, right? For sure. That's the win. Yeah. That's yeah. the, like, not only have first round picks, and this sounds like a broken record, but it's, these are facts. This is an opinion. Not only have first round picks not worked, they haven't found a diamond in the rough like other organizations have. You know, like David Johnson was good for 18 games, and then he wasn't. And then, you know, you have Chase Edmonds has been fine, but really haven't had any success. So, yeah. Yeah. If one of these guys pops, especially because they're first round picks, you want to have the conversation. How much do we extend this guy on his new contract and not do we franchise tag him or let him walk like a son Reddick? You know, you don't want to have those conversations anymore. Bo Brock, Alex Glancy, Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. The team made a couple roster moves yesterday. We'll tell you what those are. It's a, maybe a familiar name you might recognize. Actually, two familiar names. We'll get into that what it means for the uh, for the team going forward. Um, it, you know, more about the the tight end position a little bit um, on the other side of this. It's Locked On Cardinals. Let me tell you about the best tasting protein bar on the market. Of course, I'm talking about Built Bar. It's unbelievable right now. If you haven't tried it yet, what are you doing? They have nine delicious flavors. We talk about Built Bar all the time. They've got coconut, coconut, almond, cherry, raspberry, mint brownie, peanut butter brownie, double chocolate, Salted caramel, there's something for everyone. And right now, they're doing taste tests where they take their protein bar and they pit it against, and it's a blind taste test, and they pit it against the actual candy bars. And pro t- as far as the Built Bar is concerned, they're winning these blind taste tests just on taste alone. But with those candy bars, you don't get 17 grams of protein like you do with the Built Bar. 130 calories or 4 grams of sugar and only 4 grams of net carbs. Order today. You can get yourself a raspberry. You can get yourself a mint brownie, whatever you like. Go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your first order by using the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. You're throwing those in my face. My God. Oh, look. Those look delicious. Oh, look. I got three. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Four. Hold on. Is that one? Cookies and cream, Bo. I haven't had that one yeah. before. Yeah, we met. I met with a Bill Bar rep uh, last week, and I was gonna FaceTime Bo and just laugh at him the whole time. Um, yeah. There's incredible things coming. Incredible things for the state of Arizona when it comes to Bill Bar. Just put it this way: it'll be a lot easier to find them in Phoenix coming up in the near future. Oh, and we got an email from Ross, our fearless leader here from the Locked On NFL portion of Locked On Podcast Network. We're getting more in the mail. This is why we do this. I'm just going to get stockpile. Yes. Yeah. Get yourself some built bars. Yeah. Go to built.com. Save 15% by using the promo code locked15. All right. Wrapping up Wednesday <laughs> edition Locked On Cardinals, part of your Locked On Podcast Network. Alex Clancy, Bo Brock. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On AZ Cards. Um, the Arizona Cardinals made some roster moves yesterday. 
Uh, a couple of them, actually, I'll bring up the tweet from the team. They signed defensive lineman Jack Crawford, tight end Demetrius Harris, and uh, defensive lineman Marcus Hunt and Josh Morrow, a familiar name. They released tight end Kerry Angeline, the undrafted free agent from NC State, safety Jamal Carter, offensive lineman Ryan Pope, and linebacker Donald Rutledge. Um, you know, I was bummed that Angeline didn't make more of an impact. I was watching some of his college highlights, and I thought maybe this is a guy that could vie for a roster spot and maybe take over some of that uh, those tight end playmaking needs that they have. Um, Josh Morrow, it's it's like every year you've got you you got the taxes right, uh, and then you got Josh Morrow signing with the Arizona Cardinals, coming back to the organization. I think this is his third stint, um, but you know. A guy that knows the playbook, a guy that's gonna you can just put in there and, and rely upon. He can get to the quarterback. He can make plays on this defensive line. Um, and then Marcus Hunt, I was like, man, where have I heard that name before? It's because he was on like the Bengals version of Hard Knocks. He's a guy from Estonia, and he was uh, an Olympian, like I think disc thrower. He's just he looks like the mountain from um, Hard Knocks. Marcus Hunt does, and. Uh, He's been in the league now for a while. I mean, he hasn't really found his way, but he's just a big body um, defensive lineman. I was like, yeah, I've heard of that guy before. He, pretty athletic, played his college ball at SMU, but he's on the the Arizona Cardinals roster now. So we'll, we'll see. I mean, these are going to be the type of the moves that they're going to make, but we're still waiting for that Steve Kime special. You know, he seems to add at this point in the offseason, there's no rumblings, but maybe between now and the start of the regular season, he can add something. You would hope it would be either to the tight end position. We mentioned that cornerback room. Anywhere else? Running back, maybe, depending on who gets released. Yeah. I mean, I wonder when I see all these big bodies coming in, interior defensive linemen, it makes me think like, are they going to blitz a lot this year? Like, is that is that is that what's going to happen? Um I just, are they going to try yeah, and make I, way for for line more linebacker blitzing that's not just a son reddick on the outside? Like, is it is it gonna get weird? Or is going to go back to the old Vance Joseph defense before Chandler Jones got hurt last year? That's what I'm more thinking about. Like, who who knows? Like, they have so many holes still. Cornerback, sure. Running back. I think at this point you just need to punt on the cornerback position and try and focus on a running back. And just I like it's. I mean, that's where I'm at now. I mean, I wasn't for I the whole offseason. But the organization feels. I think. I think the organization's pretty confident in their corner room. As crazy as it might sound, I think that there's a lot of confidence in Byron Murphy. And Malcolm Butler and Robert Alford, who they brought back, they like their Chris Denard. I think they believe in this cornerback room, and then the two rookies, Tay Gowan and Marcus Wilson. So I, you know, as much as we, you know, have our reasons to be skeptical about it, you know, maybe Steve Kime being what we perceive as naive about it, you know, you hope that he's right. It could be a complete disaster. I mean, it seems like they're undermanned at that position, no doubt about it. Um, running back is interesting. I, you know, a name I, I would probably keep tabs on is Sony Michelle in hmm. uh in, in New England because they have 38 it's 38 like, running backs. They do, they do, and they just drafted one your boy, uh Ramondre. Of, yeah, Ramondre Stevenson out of oh, Oklahoma. Yeah. And they are, you know, Damian Harris seemed like he kind of took over the reins as the as the lead back there. I mean, I think Sony Michelle could be a guy that he'd be I think he'd be a good compliment. To uh to what they have going on right yeah, now. So, that's a good name. Um, but you never know. You never know what's gonna happen, especially with where the salary cap is right now for this season, you know, what what teams are gonna be able to do uh and who they're gonna release, who's gonna become available. Because like the off season, there were names that were available that have the quantity of names that were available that were viable options was a lot higher than it's been before. And it might be the case leading up to the regular season. It'd be it's, it's something to keep tabs on. And then I, as, to answer your question, what I think as far as the defensive line, when you don't have a guy named Aaron Donald, you know, the trend in the league is just to have a rotation. Yeah. And so they're just going to get as many bodies in there and guys that they think are going to be, you know, making some noise along with number 99 and number 55 and opening up those rush lanes. I think they're just going to get as many guys in there to stay fresh and have, you know, fresh lungs to get to the, to open up and, and occupy offensive linemen yeah i guess that makes sense i mean it's just power and numbers and you know injuries happen all the time obviously all the old cliches when it comes to the nfl yep we're only a couple days away we've got uh two more podcasts before the arizona cardinals play football 
We've got our Throwdown Thursday tomorrow. And then we've got uh, Friday. We'll preview that showdown with the Dallas Cowboys. We're, but let's, yeah, we're going live right after the show, right? We'll we'll hit live yeah, on YouTube game. and Twitter. Or, sorry, right after the game, we'll go live for about ten or fifteen minutes, and then do a full reaction on Monday and preview the you know the second preseason game for the. You will have yeah, you'll have a full reaction YouTube show, and we'll have it up right there in your podcast as well that you could find probably Saturday morning. But we'll be live Friday night. With our reaction to the game, it might even be when the fourth stringers are in there. Just keep make sure you're lo- you're following Locked On AZ Cards on Twitter at Clancy's Corner. Follow Alex. Follow myself at B O B R A C K Bo Brock. And of course, uh, keep that alerts button. Hit that alerts option on the YouTube so you don't miss out on anything. It'll send you a little notification when we do go live or when we post new episodes. This show will be live on YouTube, premiering on YouTube at noon today. And uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed podcast youtube channel we'll talk to you thursday it's a throwdown thursday what do we what should we kick around here i think uh deandre hopkins leading the nfl in receiving i saw some odds there sure i mean in yards or touchdown like i think yards is is fine but we got to come up with some sort of metric for receptions yards and touchdowns let's do it. his touchdown we'll- numbers were not good last year All right, it's Locked On Cardinals. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow.